A high fat diet can reset metabolism and prevent obesity? How does this work? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how something like that comes into press? There are actually some studies that were done on this in a journal called Cell Metabolism that you and I reported back in July of this year, 2012, that showed that if you fed rats uh, a certain number of calories but allowed them to eat it at just eight hours, that they gained less weight than if you let them eat it over a 24-hour period. It was like, what? And what we have to do is look at something called circadian rhythms, which means what are the rhythms of the body in producing its hormones that regulate how we burn fat. So it's important to know how our adrenal glands work. For example, the levels of cortisol and levels uh, and other hormones related to the adrenal gland are high in the morning and they drop through the day and they're at a low point uh, in, at night. Usually we hear circadian rhythms associated with sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have times when we sleep and times when obviously we don't. But this was kind of interesting that if they scheduled the high fat diet uh -huh. that you could lose weight on it as opposed to an unscheduled low fat diet so what that means is that if you feed these mice or rats uh, the fats or the diet that you're going to give them at a certain time and keep it at a certain time so that it's regulated and there's no snacking in between meals those animals that had the high fat diet and the same number of calories uh, didn't have as much weight gain as the people who were on a low-fat diet if they e if they ate it either in a, in a scheduled or unscheduled way. The only thing is they didn't tell us what the schedule was. You're right, yes. <laughs> I want to know what the schedule is. Well, if you were a rat, you'd want to know. <laughs> but we see we've done the study already, which is what they published in Cell Metabolism, that talked about the fact that if you just eat oh, your, your food over a certain period of time, you're better off than if you do it all day long. So people who only eat at mealtime and don't snack and probably people who have more fat in their diet than not if we're like rats in our metabolism which we probably are very similar then there's some advantage to eating fat because you know in this country we have something called a fat phobia because of all the work that was done with diet and fat a lot of that was done by Dr. Dean Ornish and we got the idea that fat was bad for you but actually there are certain fats that are terrible for you like trans fats but other fats that are absolutely essential in fact if you don't eat them you can't live so there's I go to Erasmus's book, Fats That Heal and Fats That Kill. Right. So the essential fatty acids like the omega-3s and 6s, our bodies can't make, but we have to have them to make healthy cell membranes and to do a lot of other things that are important for uh, a life that has low inf inf inflammation in it. According to this study, they were talking about these fats were not stored but they were used for energy. They were burned and, and really that points out to the fact that we know that the what we derive our energy from under normal circumstances is fat not carbohydrate. So when you measure somebody's uh, fat burning capacity and their sugar burning capacity when they're at rest and until we get to a place where we're exercising hard we burn fat. It's not till we get tired and, and when we're exercising, we go into what's called acidosis, uh, because lactic acidosis, because we're burning carbohydrate instead of fat. Well, I've noticed that when I eat something that's carbohydrate, I get hungry a lot sooner, and my energy drops more than if I eat something that has some fat in it, then it holds me over longer. And that may be part of the reason why this is so. So it's a very interesting study that was done. It was published uh, actually by people at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and, and in the big journal called FASEV, which is a very prestigious journal. So what we've got is a study here that's important that's teaching us something about uh, the fact that fat isn't all bad, but just it depends on how you use it. And just recently we were talking about a st study that showed that coconut oil could actually help us to reduce belly fat. Right, and also we know that it can be used in people who have Alzheimer's disease or other diseases of energy deficiency in the brain. If you provide coconut oil and just a dose of a couple of tablespoons three times a day, you're going to provide what are called medium chain triglycerides, which the brain now can use as energy when it can't burn carbohydrates so well. So if we can provide it with more energy, then the process of the development of the brownout, the electrical brownout, and the chemical deficiency of energy in the brain cell is less of a problem. So now it looks like maybe scheduling um, these meals could be therapeutic for obesity. Exactly. We just need to know what the schedule is. Well, at the schedule, I mean, we don't need the study to know that we should have three meals a day. 
<laughs> if we're going to snack, it's not much. And these studies are pointing out that fat's not so bad. So maybe we should re rethink this whole system and not it's make like, not yeah. make fat the enemy. And as long as the calories are the same. Yeah, and, and, and what will happen is we'll probably be a little bit more successful in our weight loss programs.